States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. signatures delivered to us in the petition encouraging us to pass the moratorium. Over 650, which is astounding, and by my count, it looked like at least 470 verifiable town residents. In the time that I've been on the town board, there have been a number of hot button issues, but never an expression of will this concerted and broad across the town. So I'm very, very, very impressed by that. I'm very inclined to take that expression of interest most seriously. These are the words of Tim Murray at the town board agenda meeting on May 5th, 2020. Some other numbers I'd like to share. The number of people who voted for Kate McKenzie on the town board in 2021, 498. The number of people who voted for Kathleen Goldberg in 21, 472. The number of people who voted for Mark Whitmer in 21, 500. The number of people who voted for Mark Whitmer pre-COVID in 2019 was 761. And the number of people who voted for Tim Murray in 2019 was 725. And now, the number of taxpayers and residents of Caroline who have signed this petition asking the town board to continue debate and education until at least January 2024, thereby pushing any possible vote on zoning until January 2024 or later, is 1,227. <laughs> residents of this town are using their voices in the most democratic ways possible. We put up signs, attended meetings, written letters. The five big in-person meetings over the past year, which includes the three listening sessions, the zoning commission info session, and the zoning commission hearing at the fire station a couple weeks ago, resulted in an overwhelming outcry against zoning. In total, approximately 127 residents spoke against zoning to only 14 for it about 90% of people against it. On top of all that is this petition with over 1,200 signatures in it. You have a responsibility to listen to your constituents. What is being presented here is valid, and if you choose to ignore this petition and take advantage of obscure New York State laws that have no direct mechanism for a referendum on zoning, then that is most certainly not a democratic approach and will be a slap in the face to residents and taxpayers of this town. It's time now for the members of the Caroline Town Board to listen to the members of the community. It's time to show that you can do what is right. I hereby present this petition to the Town of Caroline on behalf of all of the people who signed it and who want their voices to be counted. We hope that once again, like 2020, you'll be very, very impressed. Yeah. I too would like to speak to the numbers. Of the 769 signatures on the moratorium petition, the majority of them are from people who do not reside or pay taxes in the township of Caroline. This graphic depicts the numbers from various townships. There were 36 people who signed the petition twice, so I have counted each of them only once, leaving approximately 370 valid signatures. 
Granted, I did not have time or information to verify if I inadvertently eliminated someone who might be a landowner and taxpayer. Next, I would like to address the eligible voter population of Caroline with statistics taken from the U.S. Census Bureau. 23.3% of our population are actually minors, which mm -hmm. leaves approximately 2,583 people in the eligible age range. Not every eligible voter is registered, but I will leave it on the generous side. As you can see from this chart, <clears throat> nearly half of the residents in the eligible voter range signed the zoning petition, which leads me to my comparison chart. This is a simple visual representation of the 1,228 signatures from the voters and taxpayers in the town of Caroline on the zoning petition compared to the 370 on the moratorium petition. This is by far the largest petition the town of Caroline has ever had, and the directive is simple. Refrain from voting on zoning until January of 2024. I unwittingly signed the moratorium petition, mostly because I have friends who live near the proposed Dollar General site and didn't want it. But as time has gone on and I've listened to my neighbors, I regret ever having put my pen on that paper. Additionally, if I had known at that time that it would lead to the zoning fiasco, I certainly never would have signed it. I am one of 53 people that signed both petitions. I wonder how many others would have signed both if we had spoken with them. I hereby publicly withdraw my signature from the moratorium petition. I feel that the basis this board is using for implementing zoning has been duplicitous. I also filled out the survey on what we wanted in our town. I checked boxes because I like trails and conservation. However, nowhere on the deck survey did it state that it would be used as grounds to force zoning, just as the moratorium petition made no mention of it. The lack of transparency in this town board's actions and their unfounded justifications for them cannot continue to go unchecked. The town needs to let the voters decide. The people have been speaking but not heard. It is only fair that we get to make our voices heard through the election booth. This is indeed not a very good thing for me to bring up, but I feel I am held to do so. As town board member, you were voted in by the public, the people of Carroll. You are now the holders of the public's trust. About two years ago, I was at the first zoning commission meeting. At the beginning of that meeting, Tim Murray said that he wanted the zoning commission to know and remember that a very important and the best petition that has ever been handed in to the town board was handed in. And they had 800 signatures of residents of Caroline who were against the Dollar General. I knew that this was wrong, and I said that. A lot of the signatures were not Caroline residents. Tim said some were interested parties which had moved away. I said something to Mark about this at the end of the meeting, and he said Tim was right, and I could check it out at the town hall. I said really I didn't have to because I had already went over said petition. This petition was used as part of the basis for the moratorium against commercial development. Anyway, I foiled the petition and fact-checked signatures and there were around 769 signatures. After fact-checking addresses and names, once I hit 395, more than half of the signatures that were definitely not from the town of Caroline or residents, I stopped. I brought this petition and my figures before the board at the next board meeting and provided this petition with absolutely no good. I asked the board as their, uh, at that time to bring this up to the public and correct the big mistake about the greatest petition ever brought to the town and that I thought they should correct their misrepresentation. Nothing was ever said, nothing, not once. Since then I have heard of many, on many occasions from Mark and Tim that a petition has no merit. I believe that the best petition with legitimate uh, signatures of residents of town of Carolina was just handed in to the town board. I would only hope and see and know of no way that you cannot give this petition in front of you the same way that you so afforded the one against the Dollar General, which was by no means a legal or legitimate petition. But yet you put so much weight behind it. No matter what side of this subject you're on, right is right, democracy does not, should not, run on lies and untruths. Uh, I uh, thank you for your time. 
and please represent all the people in the tower. And can that petition still be signed? Because yeah. I would like to sign it. public servants and you have a responsibility to serve the public. A servant by its very nature is assisting, is helping, is trying to assist other people. And I think that when you look around this town, if you drive around and really look, there are a lot of very, very vulnerable people that live in this town, economically vulnerable. A lot of people who are struggling. And I think one of the things that you have to ask yourself is, is this zoning plan that's going to be presented to you actually helping those people? Is it really fundamentally helping? And, and I think the answer is no. I think it's a very clear definitive no. And I'll just give you as an example. Um, I find it ironic that they limit uh, formula business, which uh, Dollar General would fall into a, a formula business, to 3,000 square feet in a very small little geographic area. There's lots of farms, lots of farm buildings that are way bigger than 3,000 square feet. So it's clearly not a question of size. It's really a question of what they're doing there. And basically, what the zoning board is saying is, we don't want that to happen here. That, and, and the moratorium effectively said, we don't want this to happen here. The people that signed that original petition against the Dollar General was, we don't want that to happen here. Now, what is it that they don't want to happen there? They don't want to give people that are economic, economic, economically disadvantaged to typically shop at a Dollar General. The opportunity to shop here. That is direct result of that. And my question to you as public servants, why would you do that? I mean, where is your compassion? Why on earth would you take an action that you know, you absolutely, that's designed to prevent people an opportunity to shop at a place that they can afford. Instead, you're forcing them, forcing them to drive to another locality and pay more effectively. And I'm saying to you, that is not being a public servant. It is not compassion for your neighbor. And I really think that you need to think long and hard about that and say, what are we doing here? Look around at all the people that are opposed to this. The, the month after month after month of a significant pushback. And I guess, at what point do you say, I get it, I'm going to listen. I brought up 